You're watching Ohio Valley Conference Softball on ESPN+. Coming to you live from ES Rose Park in Nashville, Tennessee, today's game is part two of our Saturday doubleheader between the Belmont Bruins and the SIUE Cougars, and game one was a grand one for the Bruins as they have now won four straight to start OVC play. Ballman trying to work through some two-out trouble here again. Can the Bruins get them more? So that pitch is rocked out to right field. Arps racing back, and that ball is over the wall. Audrey Lyle breaking out of her slump with a big bomb over to the right field hill. A two-run shot for the nine-hole hitter, Audrey Lyle. What a stroke. These counts have been a little long here for Summers, but she's still in the prime spot. Ready with the full count offering, and that ball is lifted out to right center, and it splits. Runner coming in, Farias scores, and Anaya Baker comes through with an RBI double. Ride the wave of confidence and close the door on a perfect Saturday as that pitch is ripped to right center field. Kavanaugh coming over, and she stretches out to make the catch. What a play by Kavanaugh to seal the deal as Belmont sweeps the Saturday doubleheader. And Kavanaugh comes up clutch once again. Bottom of the second, ready to stand in. Raven Loveless trying to change the course of history between these two programs as Belmont has been dominant in our look at the series history. Of course, series history presented by Legends Bank. Belmont, as we see that first pitch, land for strike one to Ellison Olinger. Belmont, winners of 11 of the 13 games played between these two programs. Last meeting, of course, Belmont managed to pull off the 7-0 victory. And they hold the 4-1 mark in their last five games. Simply put, it's been a very dominant run for BU over TSU. But after that upstart go in the top of the first inning, you figure Tennessee State came to play. That is until Belmont's offense showed why they are top flight here in the OVC with a quick response from Kristen Green to drive in two. But now the count 1-2 and two to Ellison Olinger. One of those longtime Bruins who's been a part of the program for a good while has overcome a lot of transition to put together a very nice season with some consistency behind her in the coaching staff. Ellen Olinger has really shined. She now has the count evened up at two and two. Still batting seventh, still occasionally hampered by strikeouts, but overall enjoying a career year. Look at close one from Loveless. No Loveless lost on that pitch as the count is now full. In fact, if you look at the career numbers, Olinger, a 267 hitter, but this season batting 392. Currently tied for fourth in the OVC and average in triples, but striking out on that pitch from Loveless. First strikeout of the game for Raven Loveless is now her and Emma Summers are knotted up in that category, and she gets set to face Brentwood, Tennessee's own freshman third baseman, Emily Cockrell, one of two Cockrell sisters on the Bruins softball team. Regular starter at third base in her first season as a collegian, but she swings at that down-and-out pitch for strike one. Cockrell has been enjoying a nice, nice month after struggling in her first month of college softball play she's been able to turn it around and bat 316 looks at a ball count evened up in fact the official mark here for Cockrell as she makes her 21st start in her 22nd game overall 11 RBIs in the month of March really productive while batting usually in this 8th spot of the order which shows you the prolific nature of this Belmont offense, but also just how solid she has been with the opportunities that she's been consistently given and showing why she deserves them. So one ball and two strikes after that tick. Loveless trying to keep things quiet and keep Tennessee State in striking distance in the bottom of the second. That one comes in on the hands. Cockrell holds off and the count has gone even. Raven Loveless here, trying to build off of the last two appearances you've had, albeit in relief. 
She has not allowed a single earned run in those two spots, but gives up a ground ball up the middle for a base hit by Cockrell. The train just keeps chugging along for Emily Cockrell as this month of March continues to be a fresh spring daisy for her. Now stepping up, one of the leaders on this team, maybe the biggest personality on the field at any given point, Audrey Lyle, ready to step up to the plate. Made some noise in the series opener this Saturday against SIUE. Delivered a two-run home run for her first of the season. As she watches that one drop off. 1-0. Mile, despite being tied for third in the conference in strikeouts and suffering through a bit of those issues, she did bat three for seven against the Cougars this past weekend. A very good showing for her. Bring her batting average out of sub-200 territory as that ball is ripped high in the air to left center field, sending all of them back in. That one is out of here. The power ball for Audrey Lyle as she continues to find that home run swing. And just like that, the Bruins have dealt up their lead. It's 4-1 to one, Belmont. Audrey Lyle comes through once again with another home run. And we're counting timelines. In four days, Lyle has hit two two-run taters. Top of the Belmont order, center fielder number 20, Cheyenne Cavanaugh. Who better to reset the order to than Cheyenne Cavanaugh to try and build some momentum here off of the struggling right-hander Raven Loveless in her first start after coming out of the bullpen the last two times she's pitched. Locates it inside to the left-hander out of Spring, Texas. Strike one to Kavanaugh, who singled her last time up. Waited three pitches to do it and beat out a ground ball throw from shortstop Lauren Farias for a single. Now slugs one to the opposite side and through the hall for another base hit. Can anyone really stop Cheyenne Kavanaugh at this point? It's Growing to become more of a myth as each at-bat passes for her, especially since the start of these last two series. She's making some pretty good impressions. And I'm sure Belmont is certainly happy to see that she chose to come back for her fifth year when she certainly had the option to stop things after last year altogether. Happy to have Kavanaugh back for one last ride. So now Bay NCO's up in the box. And Kavanaugh takes off on the strike call. Throw to second is not in time. That's 43 straight stolen bases for Cheyenne Kavanaugh. She was not hesitating in the slightest. That is stolen base number two on the day for Belmont. As now in their last four games, going back to the start of the SIUE series, the Bruins are a perfect 10 for 10 in swipes. One to Encio. A little clipping on that slap shot, but it goes foul towards head coach Laura Matthews. So now quickly 0-2 at the plate for Bay Encio, who singled as well her last time around. Encio as a freshman batting 377 while being an exclusive starter for this Belmont team. Now puts one on the ground with a little slap shot. Farias has trouble with it, throws it high. Over to the third baseman, Anaya Baker, and Encio takes off, goes to second, and beats the throw home as now Kavanaugh comes in, gets hit at the plate, and is out, and she is rung up. Oh, no. Oh, no. There was a collision at the plate right there, and Kavanaugh now taking a moment here. Bruins were racing around the base pass trying to catch every single throw by half a step here as we take a look and see that the umpires are having a meeting. And while all that was happening, we did hear home plate umpire Roland Hammer mention out of the box, out of the box, which makes us think that they might be talking about whether NCO should be called out. Now they're asking Tennessee State 
Head coach Janae McGrath, if she wants the result of the play. It's a very big call right here. Meeting still going on in this battle as Belmont has been able to put the ball in play and certainly give themselves opportunities to score runs. Already up 4-1 to one as this offense just keeps churning around here. And it looks like they will call out of the box. Encio called out of the box. That is the second time in the last four games that Bay Encio has been called for stepping out of the box on a slap hit, something that I'm sure the coaching staff will certainly want to work with this young freshman going forward. She's still trying to learn the finer techniques. Tough break there, but now Kavanaugh back on at second, and you're hoping that her head is okay after that collision at home plate with catcher Maggie Klug. Ball drops off the map to Abby Ledbetter for ball one. So at the very least, we're happy to see Kavanaugh back out there okay. Certainly a big moment. And a pivotal player as anyone in college softball. Ledbetter looking at a strike called to the inside frame. One one. Grounded over to third. Baker picks it up over on her right foot and fires it across to Point No for out number three. As the Bruins avoid injury disaster, but unfortunately leave a runner on. Still lead 4-1 to one, heading into the third over Tennessee State. We'll be back for more after this. <laughs> 